Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of CGTN Live. We are here in Wuzhen reporting on the World Internet Conference. And uh, it is con uh, the conference itself is concluding and we have helped you to tour the exhibition area of this exhibition. And uh, uh, there has been many interesting technology things um, around. And now, uh, you can see I'm looking down upon here because there's my computer and I'm watching I'm also watching my own live so I can see your comments in real time so if you're watching this and you have any question you want to ask about the internet about 5g about China then you can feel free to put it in the comment section and I can see it I can see it here yeah so yeah I can see a lot of people are already uh, starting starting their greetings so yeah greetings uh, everybody over there and I can see you're all sending your greets yeah cool and uh, so have you have you got any questions to ask here i'm looking at the uh, i'm looking at the comment section live here so if you ask any question i will try my best to answer for you um i have just came back from the uh world internet conference it's just concluded this morning well it is afternoon here in in Wuzhen, in China, in eastern China. So uh, I don't know what is the time over there in your home, but uh, at here this is the afternoon. So um, I'm enjoying. I just enjoyed my din uh, my lunch, and now um, I'm here to answer your questions. So I'm looking at the Facebook, our YouTube channel, and the and our Twitter, so to to see if you have any questions to ask. So if anybody from China, we're also on live in Weibo, so it is possible for you to put in the comment as well. And uh, here I'm refreshing the page and to tell you more about, uh, and at the moment I'll try to tell you more about what I've learned from the World Internet Conference. So yeah, here's the computer and this is my computer, it's from Dell, um, it's an old version but I love it. And okay, let's see the questions. Yeah, I can see somebody ask. Do uh, on Weibo ask? Do they have the the chance to ask questions? Of course. Yeah. So why is CGTN streaming in C in Facebook while it's forbidden in China? Well, that is very complicated. Yeah, I'm also personally I am looking for the answer as well as you are. So yeah, although I work for the state media, but. I don't really know the answer. I've, uh, I've been reaching out to the government for the answer to this question for a long time. Yeah, and uh, for my own concern, that you know, Facebook is not is not a completely quiet place. It's it's not a completely peaceful place. So there are a lot of hate speeches. There are uh, fake news. So you know, f the word fake news itself came up in last year uh, to the public view. Partially because Facebook is not regulating, it is not controlling the fake news very well. At least it's not perfect. There are not a lot of things to improve, right? And Facebook is causing s some realistic trouble in some areas like, you know, there is a country in the Southeast Asia called the Thailand. Um, there, um, we have reports that there is already something, uh, some, some political riots caused by Facebook spreading not accurate, inaccurate information in their country. So there are some concerns that the government think it's not yet a right time to let Facebook inside China again. And uh, it's not. And also, on the other hand, it's not completely true that Facebook is banned from China because Facebook has its branch company in China and they do business with Chinese people. So, uh, but. But not the face, but not on Facebook website itself, but in other ways. So Facebook has a lot of products. Actually, the CGTN also also has uh, also using their part uh, part of their code, because Facebook is a pro um, has a lot of uh, programmers and uh, computer engineers working for them, and they they make great software like Facebook. So um, so let's pause for a while. You can see there is a boat. Well. Uh, there's a boat over there. So Wujian is a water town. You can see there's water. There's water everywhere. It's like a, a small, smaller Venus in eastern China. And uh, so this kind of boat is not common in China anymore. But in this scenery, in this scenery, in this tourist site, it, it can be seen everywhere. It's very interesting. So you can, you can, I don't know if you can hear. 
just now you can hear the water flowing, the sound of the water flow. It really calms your mind. It makes um, this is a very peaceful place actually. And let's see if there are some other questions. We will try. We will definitely try to cover the Facebook story in in later time. I'm still working on that, so I don't I don't have the the uh, valid validated conclusion. So once I have that information available, I will tell you. I will and tell you with and with nothing hidden. So. Let's see if there's anything in as other questions. So how to help other people in this internet in China? So internet in China. People help each other on the internet in China, of course. So it may not the same way like in the other countries, but Chinese people have their own version of uh, help, of like uh, cross helping sites. So um, you know there is a there is a new uh, there is a common phenomenon in the US and in the European countries called the help groups so people sit around, sit in a, in, in a circle and they talk, they talk what they are confused about what and they complain uh, what they feel bad about to each other so they uh, so after letting your inner your inner anger or inner confusion out it may it may make you feel better so there are some similar things in China as well Mm, may not uh, be called helping groups, but they have groups in the social media. They have groups in their I am in their instant messaging apps, so they can talk with each other. They can let themselves out anytime they want. We complain about a lot. Of, uh, we complain about a lot of things on the social media, and personally, I have never like get controlled by the government or something. So, and uh, yeah. Sometimes you may have you may violate some regulations and I think there's regulation everywhere, right? So that's similar like you you don't really want to curse other people online because that's simply not really right So let's see why So why we're choosing Wujian to hold the internet conference? It's such beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful definitely and why are we choosing Wujian to be the right place? So first, yeah, you have noticed this is a very beautiful place and it's a very famous tourist site. So they want to build this town into a better place and they want to attract more tourists to this, uh, to this uh, water town. It has a long history and now it's embracing a new wave of technology evolution. So. Um, and also, this place is very near, uh, uh, sits very near to Hangzhou. That is the headquarters of Alibaba. I think that partly is the reason. That also contributes to the reason. So, and uh, Wu Zhen, to for to hold this conference, Wu Zhen has really made a lot of efforts. They built a large uh, exhibition center and an even larger conference center, as you may have seen that uh, in the. In the last two days, we have doing live streams for like two or three days, and you may. So after this live, you may watch other live streams to see if there is any, um, if there's any interesting things you may want to you may want to watch. We have experienced like 5G technology, the prototype of 5G technology, and uh, there's 8K video streaming online, and there's also driverless vehicle developed by Baidu. It has KTV inside. It has a karaoke inside of a car. That's very interesting. That uh, the moment they um, uh, the Baidu uh, staff unveiled there's microphone in the car, it really shocked me. You can you can check our previous lives to see how shocked I am inside that car. And let's see if there's other questions. So how popular is the dark web in China? Well, to my personal experience and the data available to me, the dark web is not quite popular in China because the thing is. Chinese China is a developing country. Not everybody can access the internet itself, and not everybody even. It, it's not true that everybody has a computer in China, so they don't. They may not have the device to go online, or they don't see it necessary to go online. There are a lot of people that are still living under quite poor conditions, and they don't see internet as necessary in their, in their life yet. So. This this comes to a more important question that um, there's a widespread misunderstanding that China is very developed, China is very uh, is very strong or extremely 
uh, big in in the economy, but it's it's not true like that. China is the world's second largest economy because it has so many people, and China covers a large land, a large area of land. So there, so it's just because it's um, so just because it has a large scale does not mean it's developing good. It, uh, does not mean it's a developed place. So China is trying hard to develop itself and is growing really fast, but that does not mean China is already developed. So you see me that is uh, doing a live stream on Facebook and uh, I'm using my own computer and I have I had a relatively decent work in the uh, in the China Global Television Network, but not everybody are living like me. There are still a lot of poor people in China or below the level of uh, below the uh, the poverty line in China. So. That is what uh, that, that is a great concern of the Chinese government, and the government itself is is putting really hard efforts into this poverty eleva ele elevation, right? To remove to get people out of the poor conditions. You can you can check you can also check CGTN. We have been reporting on this with very heavy efforts. We sent we sent out reporters almost every day to cover this kind of issue. How to get some Chinese people out of the poverty, out of poverty. This is very, this is a very, if not critical, it's a very important matter in China right now. So let's see, let's other questions. How is the internet so regulated in China, but a high number of web attacks are originated from China? Well, everything scales up in China. You see reports like a lot of a lot of Chinese people are regulated. They they can only access limited internet resources. But but actually in China there were a lot of Chinese version of those of Facebook, Chinese version of Twitter, or the or the Chinese internet companies even invented something else to something better something better for Chinese people. It might it might not good for for a global audience. But there were a lot of uh, software uh, apps, a lot of phones in China uh, that seems really good to Chinese people. The reason why they don't sell it to Europeans, to Americans, to Russian people, is not only because it's hard to sell to, to sell things in a foreign country. It's also because their products were tailored for the Chinese purpose, for the Chinese people. So you only get the experience in China. If you have time, if you have a chance, come to China and see what the Chinese phones are doing in China. It's a completely different thing as you imagine in the US or in the Western countries. That's not the same thing. In China, you have some, un China is a unique country. So you need unique web, uh, unique, unique cell phones, unique computers, un even the unique internet to, 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 live a, to live a crew, to live a better life. And about the web attacks. So China is, uh, while there's a lot of poor people in China, there are also some people that were extremely rich and they have plenty of time to do anything they want. So there were also a big number of people in China like that. So they're also uh, exploring the internet and they're trying hard, uh, they're trying to see, uh, to, to get some interesting on things on the web. That's why they try, they try web attacks. So, you know, I don't know if you how much you know about hackers, but to my point of view, hacking sometimes is only for fun, not not for profit. So I had an interview with a legendary hacker, you know, uh, Mr. Whit Mr. Mitnick, that the, the I think that's one of the oldest hacker of it, uh, alive in America, right? So he told me personally that in an interview that he do hacking, he does hacking only because it's a fun, not to profit. So you can see that he's now he had made a great fortune by now, but that's after he 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 break up things really bad. He did some really bad things. Was sent to the federal prison in America, right? He was put into prison for like for a couple of the, for a couple of years, right? And after he came out, he realized he need he need a life. He so in addition to this funny hacking thing, he has to do something serious to 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 make money to support his life, and. After that, he, after that decision, he created his company and to help other internet companies to stay safe. So he is a legendary hacker. He know how. So he knows better uh, how to make how to keep people safe. 
So I think that is what is happening in China as well. So what is the most? Oh, there's another question. What is the most unforgettable product from for me from this year's conference? Okay, for me this conference, the most amazing thing is 5G. I'm feeling the same as you are. So、um, I know that most of you guys are really interested in the 5G technology because、uh, I can see here、uh, we we put up a poll, we put a poll, we did some polling on Twitter with our、uh, with our fans. With CGT and fans, and they, they seems to be really concerned,、uh, seems to be really interested in 5G, because let's see that, 43, uh, we pull, we, uh, there are about 500 people participate in the polling, and 43 percent of them really interested in a 5G smartphone, and 60 percent of them are generally interested in 5G. So we are on 4G right now. So maybe not everyone watching this show is on 4G, but 4G is getting common in China. There are more than 30 percent of the people can access the 4G internet on their phone. So、um, uh, so 4G is common to me. I have been using this technology for years. So it's basically fast, but not fast enough to be to to be to replace. The Ethernet to replace the optical fiber. So you still need to connect line to your computer, cable to your computer to get a stable and fast internet. So with your phone, that experience is downgraded a little bit. And、uh, so we have seen so we have seen the draft and the completed standard for 5G. 5G standard is already has already come out, and the standard says it will bring. A network that's even faster, even more stable than than the cable network. That's really amazing, and that is very ambitious to say at least. So, such ambitious goal made me concerned because I don't know if the actual 5G technology we eventually get in the future might not be that good because they promise that they can deliver finish the delivering of information in one thousands. Uh, of a second, so they can deliver 1,000.、Uh, so, like、uh, deliver information 1,000 times in a second. That sounds like impossible to me, and、uh, I really want to see how they they will eventually make this happen. So, there are a lot of companies currently working on the 5G technology, like China's Huawei and uh, uh, and Qualcomm in the U.S. So, speaking of Qualcomm, Qualcomm got got an got an honor. Get honored in this year's World Internet Conference in Wuhan.、Uh, they were honored for their、uh, for their pioneering technology, pioneering products on 5G. So it's so you see that a lot of people are are interested in 5G, and it will get commercialized in China in about next year. So we're really looking forward to this, and so also you can watch our live stream. I think that's on. November the sixth. So we had a tour in the exhibition center, and we we have seen that 5G station with our bare eyes. So that is from the China Telecom. They try、uh, so they cracked one of their stations open to let us see the inside of their product, and they also demonstrated not with a phone but with a computer how fast the 5G network can be. So on the per on their perfect condition. 5G can be as fast as one more than one gigabyte,、uh, not gigabyte, more than one gigabits per hour、uh, per second. So, so that's really fast. It's like、uh, if you watch a Blu-ray movie, you want to buy Blu-ray disc, right? So maybe so on 5G, you don't even need to buy the Blu-ray disc anymore. You can watch Blu-ray quality movie on your phone, streaming. I mean, you don't need to download. There's no buffering time at all. Because that that kind of insane 5G speed can sub can buffer like、um, like nearly 80 seconds, not 18, 80, 80 seconds of video streams in a second. So so you watch one second, that buffer goes for 80, goes for 80 seconds. That's 80. So unless you watch the, you watch the Blu-ray movie at Maybe 80 times, 80 times speed. Then maybe you need some time, need some time to wait. 
So that's that's really fast. I mean, that's insane. I like ten years ago when I was in college, I never imagined internet on a mobile phone would be this fast. This is so amazing. I'm really happy to live in this this fast evolving world. So let's see if there are other questions from you. So what will be the biggest change that 5G can bring to our daily life? I think I'll talk about that. This insane fast speed can allow us to watch really extremely high quality video on the go and it allows us to play video games with a more responsive and it can even maybe in, the, uh, in like two or three years we can see VR contents live online. So live VR requires really crazy bandwidth but 5G is capable of that craziness. So let's see. Uh, so I will bump out of Facebook for a while and see if there's some more comments from the from Twitter. And see, if there's a live stream here, and oh, it seems people are already talking. Let's check out. So social media and uh, okay, why mail? Well. <laughs> Yeah, I am male. What's so wrong with you? Well, um, there are a lot of beautiful girls here in CGT, and I know, and they, um, they were, they're also doing really well in live streams. But um, for technology news, for, um, currently, I think uh, for technology news online, I am the main. So uh, you, maybe you have to watch me for for quite a, for for a bit more time until we find a, we find another uh, female female online anchor uh, to deliver the cotton to you so i would try to be as pretty as possible but uh, yeah i know that that's ne that gun that's never going to be comparing to the girl to a girl so another question how would new technology like ai and cloud and big data to shape the traditional industries in china well traditional industries are you from the from from one of those companies so um, to the, I would quote some Germany people to see that to tell you this to tell you this. German, Germany in Germany there is a concept called Industry 4.0. So um, I don't know if you know about the Industry Revolutions. So the first time is about the steam engine. So they can uh, we can we can boil water and use the steam to power to power machines. And later we have the we have we have we have the the currently working engine in the car, like you use oil. So if you fill in oil or you fill in fuels uh, to to make it spin, to make it uh, run really fast. And the third time of industry revolution is the internet and computer. They they do calculating like in crazy speed, faster than any human. So um, they have they have take they have replaced us in doing calculating. And uh, later, so now. As we, as half of all human beings connected to the internet, it's the time to launch the fourth industry revolution, which might be the IoT, which might be smart manufacturing. It's not defined yet. It's still a very vague concept. We don't know what exactly that means, but that is what we have to explore. That's what we are doing right now. That's what every business people, every industry, every, every head of the uh, factories are trying to do now. They want to find what will be the future. So, so industry 4.0 is not about now. It's about the future. And uh, what 5G will bring to the traditional industries is like uh, 5G is about extremely fast internet. That that's one side, and on the other side, it's extremely responsive. So you input the command, the remote, uh, and and the. The, ro the robot will get the job down in a very remote place instantly. This will bring a vast difference. I don't know if you are in, uh, if you have played any computer games. There is a, a concept called the lag, so uh, or latency. So when you when you like in the virtual world, when you fire a gun, and uh, the the bullet will only arrive uh, arrive at a wall or at a target like 0.2 seconds later. So that's pathetic. So we wanted to to land instantly. So that's the same thing for like a uh, remote surgery, like uh, a doctor sitting in uh, in his uh, office room and commanding a robot to do to do surgeries on a remote place. That sounds very cool, right? But the but the latency will will like disable this doctor from performing perfectly because you you, you move 
and that machine will move a bit time later. So you have to get yourself suited to this uh, to this kind of situation. It's very hard. Most of those doctors will have to learn from zero again. So, so why not let's push technology forward and let the doctors to do what they what they already used to. Uh, so on the remote place. So that is uh, that is what I see as 5G will bring to this world. Also, this remote controlling also applies to the to the autonomous vehicle, because you know uh, driving a car in a remote place or or like uh, stopping the car. So you know, driverless vehicle or autonomous vehicle is very dangerous to a lot of people. So they're running on the road with no one inside or with 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 someone inside but not driving. So the car drive itself. So it's extremely important to slow down the car to or to to put it at a stop really fast. We, we need to uh, so when something happens, we want the car to stop as soon as possible. So this is what the remote control comes in. We really need some remote remote method. So when the cloud or the data center detects a car is going the wrong way or is going the wrong lane, so it can issue the command instantly to, to prevent tragedy from happening. So yeah, this highly responsive internet can really bring a lot of difference to our life. And let's move on to the next question. So let's see if there's, if there's any more question on Twitter. And here it is. Mm, not on Twitter yet, so I will check Weibo. Let's see. It's amazing. We only have. Uh, so originally, when we launched, uh, when I came to CGT, and I thought there might be a lot of people. Uh, there might be a lot of Chinese people watching our show, but instead, according to what I know, only like one digit percent of people are Chinese. So the next question would be, what is the WIC achieved in the past few years? Well, in the past few years, well, yeah, WIC has been going on for five years. So the just concluded one is the fifth WIC here. And um, uh, in these five years, I only attended three of them. So I. But I ask a lot of people, and I know what's happening. Uh, what happened on the on the first and second? So, WIC is is not is not somewhere new things come uh, new things comes out. It's a more lo more of a conclusion of what happened in the previous year. So it's like a, the admission of our uh, late of the a demonstration of the latest development in the last year. So I think the WIC, the history of WIC is basically the, the history of internet in China and partly in the world. So what ha what you have witnessed in the past few years about the internet will be what we have achieved in the WIC. Will be demonstrated in the in the WIC. So more about the WIC achievements is that WIC is a platform for businessmen to talk with each other. So if you have a great technology on on the internet and you need to you need to find more clients or you need some investments, so it's a good so WIC will be an ideal place for you. You you apply and you go to, you, you come to Wujian to to this water town to this beautiful water town and you talk business with people. There there's a lot there's a lot of Chinese tea here and there's tea house or this cafe, there are also some hotels for you to uh, to have the talking or to demonstrate your product or to to do what to do basically whatever you want. And uh, so, I think if you have something uh, really cool you want to show the world, it, WIC could be a really good place. And this th this place has never refused anyone. I think so. They want to uh, they really want to enrich their own continent. So I think they will get you involved if, if you have really cool products. So let's see if there's anything else on Weibo. Okay, I want to pioneer something in China. I'm thinking pizza. Well, pizza is common in China. It's not pioneering, buddy. <laughs> the tragedy is here is I'm not smart enough to pay attention. Well, paying attention is not if um. Attention is not about how smart you are, so it's about how devoted you are, right? So, and let's see. Much love keeps strong hearted like man Bruce Lee. Well, yeah. You try hard like Bruce Lee, you will achieve something. I think 
this is a free world. Everyone with a good will will, have, will eventually have a good result. So let's see what is happening here. Right, from, okay, from UK, from... You guys are really from a lot of places, right? I have never imagined talking with so many audiences all around the world. Like Chinese people, which means most people are talked to. There's kind of God created people. They're so nice and experienced, very nice. Yeah, Chinese people, like the Filipinos, Chinese people are very nice. Yeah. So, and there's one more thing about Chinese people. They really, really welcome foreigners. It, it should be. Uh, if only you came to China, you will realize how welcome they are. So they may bring you more benefits to their own people sometimes. Come and try it. It's really interesting. Chinese people are. And, and the thing is, you know, uh, in, like in the previous like 20 years in China, there were not a lot of foreigners. Or maybe compared to the, to the vast local population, because there were more than a billion Chinese people living in this country. So... Uh, when I was a child, all people I can see are black hair, yellow skin, black eyes, all of them. So I'm used to I'm used to thinking that every single people look like that. But turn out there are some foreigners. There are white hair. There are there are uh, there's there's yellow hair. There's even uh, natural n natural red hair. Those are amazing to me. Uh, I've never. So when I was a little boy, I've never imagined there's black people, there's white people in this world. I don't know of them. So it's until I was in like like 12 or 13 years old do I realize there are so many different kind of people in this world, and that made me super interested. I want to know so different uh, so people with different kind of skin, how do they live? What kind of life do they have? So uh, how do they make fun? So how do they? Uh, get their life spin. How do they uh, make a living? So what language do they speak? Yeah, I later I realized there's foreign language so and you can see I am bilingual so English uh, Chinese is my mother town uh, mother tongue so to learn so to to talk with different kind of people I learn English and now I'm talking with you. Yeah, so and Okay, there's another question. IOT is very popular now. Will you let smart home appliance enter your house? Definitely, I'm buying them. <laughs> Smart home devices is very uh, is getting hot in China. Um, maybe like three years ago, it's not that it's not that pop popular. But now, uh, so including me and the friends around me, they're they're really buying those things. Um, maybe partially because that manufacturers in Shenzhen and in all about China, they are now making better products. But also, there are some AI. There are open source AI platforms to link them together. So, so if I buy, if I buy a phone from one company and uh, a smart, uh, a smart radio from another company, so those may not, uh, these two devices may not compatible with each other. So, uh, so maybe this phone will refuse to talk with other companies' devices. But now there is open source platforms to link them together to invite at, uh, so some non-profiting software and. So inviting all those devices into a same room so that is very that is very uh, fascinating to see you know uh, the open source platform have integrated all these uh, all these technologies together and they all sit in the same room they speak the same language so they understand each other so I can use my phone to control everything that is very that's very cool isn't it so yeah Chinese people are nice. So let's see if there's anything else. If there's no, if there's no question for this moment, I will talk a little bit more about my own experience in the WIC. So the World Internet Conference is. Um, I have been here for three years, and Wujin is quiet. Wujin is peaceful. But okay, there's one more question from cool. There's one more question from Weibo. So when can we make the era 404 disappear? Well, I don't know if you know what exactly the 404 means here. So, the well. So, is there anything wrong with the signal, or? Is, okay. So, so the era 404 is is among the uh, the internet protocol called TCP/IP. So, when you get something from the internet, um, 
and the internet says it's not there yet or it's not existed like if I'm looking for so so if I'm looking for something like uh, if I'm looking for something like uh, for example my son which is not there so I don't have I don't have any ch children yet so if I say if I tell the internet where is my son it will it will tell me error 404 is not there right so error 404 will appear whenever you search a, a, something that's not exist so I don't think it's possible to make it disappear right so let's see if there's uh, any other things so there were uh, there were some other numbers of, of, of internet errors you can see in the TCP IP protocol so like um, there's 403 which means it's locked so like error 403 when I if I put something online that but I only want myself to see it like if I'm cl using cloud services to store my files I don't want anybody else to see it so I lock it with the 403 uh, with a uh, with, with a lock with a password or something and when you want to act when someone else access it uh, want to take the file away that uh, then the web service will tell him f error 403 which means access denied or you don't have the right password and also there's even an error code when things are all right <laughs> that's very interesting there's, you know the internet technology those technical nerds are sometimes thinking completely different from uh, people are in, in, in the other fields like the error 200 the error 200 which means everything is fine <laughs> that's very interesting and something like 201 so that means everything's fine but there's a little bit of thing that uh, unimportant thing going on here there's a lot of uh, error codes on the internet you may want to search it for, for a lot of uh, there are a lot of articles de describing those uh, error codes it's, it's cool to know them yeah, and you may get so when you meet those error codes, you you will know what to do with it. There's also uh, the fifth category, like error five o three, which means the server. There's something wrong with the server. So today is November the 9th. So on November the eleventh, there will be a great event happening in China, which is the double eleven uh, shopping festival. Maybe I say so everybody would go online like crazy to buy things because there are discounts it's basically the black the black friday in china so uh when this uh on that exact day everyone are going to the e-shopping sites to the e-commerce sites so those sites will have to handle a lot of customers maybe in billions so mm, th so there might be something wrong going on with their server busy handling each customer so sometimes the server will give you error 503 which means we're too busy or something is wrong here I can't handle you right now please come back later things like that there's a lot of error numbers those are all interesting uh, I used to study that a lot as a technology nerd so let's see if there's any other questions going on here. okay so is uh, so how did China Telecom do do the BGP hijacking in North America? No, that that does not exist. Check your source. It's, it's not. It's not even happening. I know it. So all the more are technical problems. Report to be told here. So so show me the report. I, I see you are. I see you are talking on Twitter. Show me the report. I will tell you why that is wrong. I know this. I know this incident, and I know it's not done by the China Telecom. And so. And then is Alibaba inclusive in product promotion? Inclusive? I don't know what you mean by inclusive here. So about product promotion on, on Alibaba's website, I don't know if I don't know if you're a business owner or a buyer. So if you are buying things on Taobao, um, there is product promotion going on, of course. So uh, if you buy if you buy something on Alibaba or other e-commerce websites and you allow the company to use your, your your purchase history they will they will like uh they will give you suggestions on other things you may also interested so you, you can see everywhere this word you may also interested in something 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 so there, there is an algorithm going on um, behind those servers to tell you uh, to uh, like if I buy a pair, like if I buy a pair of shoes I might also buy a pair of socks right so this is natural this is this is very natural in any business model and okay 
So when we need will we need new phone for 5G? Absolutely. Oh, we're back to 5G, right? So about 5G, there is something uh, really sad. I need uh, I need to tell everybody that um, in the world of 5G, the current phone, the current phones we have in our hand will not work. It only works with 4G. We need new. We, we absolutely need to buy new phones to use the 5G technology. But there's all those discounts or there's all those packages from the uh, from the carrier from, uh, to for us to save money, right? You can sign you can sign a two-year contract with the with the carrier, so and you can take one phone for free, right? Those kind of services are everywhere, I believe. And uh, even if you want a customized phone, it's not it's not so expensive anymore, right? It's like the phones are always like. Uh, in China, I, I would say it in in the Chinese uh, in the renminbi instead of U.S. dollars. So um, a phone would worth like two thousand to four thousand, maybe. It is like that ten years ago. It is like that nearly twenty years ago. Phone's price has been basically remaining the same. That's very crazy. That, that that's very good. You know, uh, we all we always buy phones with the same price, and with the exception of iPhone, of course, they're they're really trying to. To boost up their price, but uh, they have their own way to do business. And uh, well, let's see if there are other questions on Facebook. I heard you're interested. I heard it says China can see the website in Canada. Oh, really? So, and uh, we need a new phone. And watch it here. So, let's see if there's other comments. I'm checking Weibo. Your use opinion? Uh, well, there is something called, I think it's Jizoya on Weibo. Um, dude, I have to say that I don't understand your question. That that word that that why that why word seems like pinyin, but I I can't read it. We may you may need to input Chinese. Or, or you may need uh, you may need to translate into English to let me understand what, what they're talking about. Sorry, <laughs> and that's that's not exactly opinion, I'm sure. And uh, let's see if there's other things. It's amazing. I've never imagined to talk with you like that. There are there are actual people talking here. Okay. Did any did any one of you living in China right now? I think our our service is available in Chinese mainland and Taiwan and Hong Kong as well. And uh, let's see if there's any comments on YouTube. Okay. Oh, I see something. Uh, message retracted. I'm looking at it, man. Why are you saying the system telling YouTube is telling me message retracted? Why are you retracting your message? I want to see your message, man. And uh, phones from China causing more radiation. Really? Are you sure of that? Do you have any reports, or do you, have you ever compared them? Have you compared them? So about the radiation of phones. First, radiation of phones does not hurt you. So um, I think that's common knowledge. So there are a lot of studies out there to telling you to 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 try to find that if. The mobile the mobile phone signal will hurt people, but no solid con no solid conclusion has been drawn from all those studies, right? I think you know that. And um, also um, about Chinese phones. So is there a difference on radiation from Chinese phones and other phones? I don't really think so. Have you, so all these phones are manufactured in Shenzhen or in or in some or, or most of the time in factories in China, right? They Sometimes those phones came out from the same same street line. Uh, why are they so different? Why why, even, why they become so different eventually? It's not it's it's not fair or it's not it's not normal, right? Okay, when is CGTN website available again in certain EU countries? Okay, that is a good question. So, GDPR is harsh. You know, you are European. You know what I'm talking about, right? G the 
the GDPR is a uh, to to people not uh, living out of Europe. You may not know about the GDPR. It's basically a regulation that tells uh, all those companies to be all the internet companies to behave well to behave in the Europe. So European has been really harsh on bad internet behaviors. That's really cool to my to my personal point of view. People need to behave on the internet, and internet companies also need to behave because those companies have power to control its users or to control their services they need it's it's even more needed that they they should behave so um, GDPR is harsh and we have been trying uh, to to adjust our websites to suit the the regulations to 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 go in the to go in line with those regulations and so we're uh, so you know CGTN belongs to the CCTV. It's a very large institution. It's a very large TV station. Sometimes change comes slow. So um, it's a very complicated uh, matter to modify over our desktop website. So we need to, uh, you, you may need to wait. Um, um, I'm not sure of that, maybe months to, to have your service back, in, to our service back in Europe. But um, there's another uh, another news I will tell you. Uh, I don't know if you you're sure uh, you, you know about that. So CGTN is opening its London headquarters in a short moment. So, so so you can see we have reporters. We will put reporters there. We will put a newsroom in there. So I think I, I personally I'm sure that CGTN will be available in Europe soon because you know we have headquarters there. If the service is not available to the local people what's the point right so I think so getting CGTN service back in Europe is on the plan it's what we are doing right now and so do you have a fiber internet infrastructure throughout China and good quality Wi-Fi and mobile data usage percentage throughout mobile internet usage percentage I think everybody almost everybody in China has a mobile phone that's available that's that can access 4g technology right now and uh, um, internet coverage is expanding in China like crazy. So this year, China. So actually, right at this WIC conference, uh, th this World Internet Conference, the uh, there is an official report on on the internet usage, on the internet development about China and about and about the world. There are two thick books that's, that's talking about this topic. I think. Um, and also we have reports on that so go to our website to see and uh, you can also search in our website or in the mobile app or even in social media I think if you can find my previous articles talking about this talking about this like how how many Chinese people how much percent of Chinese people access can access the internet so according to my knowledge it should be um, desktop desktop one it should be about half and uh, mobile internet it should be almost all of them <laughs> and uh, so um, also uh, the battery chargers confiscated airborne yeah it's not battery chargers it's the mobile battery it's, it's like the the power banks power banks are seized everywhere it's not only in China right if you have a really super huge super powerful power bank then you can't pass any passport because it's generally dangerous to have those power banks on a plane right you do understand what I mean right I don't think China is, has any exceptions here isn't is no exceptions here so there's any more questions oh I think oh we have been here for nearly an hour right yeah so I don't think we have any uh, I think it's time to to close this live stream and uh, we will try to uh, reach for you uh, anytime later so anytime later I will, yeah I will try to write more articles and uh, put it on the social media website I will read any reply on the social media website about my articles so and uh, I would try to reach you with my personal account um, but it's personal it's not announced so uh, yeah, you may have to so sometimes I will I will answer your questions as CGTN but not most of the time I would try to contact you with my personal account and then um, so on Facebook on Twitter on YouTube and on Weibo yeah I have accounts in all those websites and I can talk with you directly if you're interested and so I think that's the end of the of today's live stream and this is our coverage of the world internet cover the world internet conference in Wuzhen and that's it thank you very much